Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Find a place. Come on, kings and priests of the Lord. Come on, kings and priests of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary of the Lord. Set our hearts towards you, Lord. Set our hearts towards you, Lord. You know, when the priest would come into the temple, that's why they washed themselves. It was if they were cleaning off the things of the day. They were cleansing themselves of the things of the day. And in this time, in this covenant, you navigate forever as kings and priests in the earth you don't come and go we're just meeting in the tent because god has ordained a space where he wants to manifest some things but you church you people you followers of jesus he is inhabiting you you are the habitation of the holy spirit so at any moment you can minister to the lord in your spirit and he calls for his church to rise up as kings and priests of the earth in these days. I just want to open with one of my favorite scriptures. It's Psalm 103. I like it because, like Carl said, sometimes you come in and your mind is other places. But Psalm 103 just really brings our thoughts, our spirits, our souls, our minds into just a focus of the real, the real reality. And it says this, Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name how much of our inmost being all praise the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits wow you know that's a lot he's blessed us he's favored us he saved us all his benefits he forgives us all our sins and heals us of all diseases. How many? All. all. He redeems our life from the pit. How many of you have been saved out of the pit? Come on. <laughs> yeah. And he crowns you with love and compassion. Wow, before we even get into worship this morning, the Lord says, I want you to right now focus on what you're crowned with. And a lot of times, especially now in our culture, compassion is, and love can be hard to find, even in Christians. I don't know about you, but I want more of that. I want to put my focus on the fact that we are crowned with love and compassion. He satisfies our desires with good things. <laughs> so that, here we go, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, 
I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe displays Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God to you are and we honor you this morning Holy Spirit Jesus Father God the end angels that have come into this house this morning we uh, we honor you and the cloud of witnesses those who have gone before us who planted the seed of revival on this ground we bless you this morning teach you a new song this morning don't don't be afraid <laughs> but it has a lot of the names of God in fact Ori 
made this drum set by hand and he wrote these Hebrew words here and I said this morning I said Ori what does that say in Hebrew and he said it says Jehovah Nisi which is he is our victory <laughs> so this morning if you have your lyric sheets if anybody doesn't have them hold up your hand Linda's got some more here you might need to look at that I'm sorry the overhead is it's uh, Hard to see. a little bright in here, isn't it? Thank Sorry, God Millie. Thank for the sunshine. We love the sunshine. <laughs> We're so glad for the sunshine. Woo! Jehovah Nisi, the Lord provides for me. Jehovah Rapha, he heals my every need. Jehovah Shama, the one who's always there. Jehovah Ra, the shepherd guiding me. Jehovah El Kadesh, the one who makes me holy. Jehovah, he 
is the great I am. to speak directly to him. And we're going to say, you're Jehovah. Yeah, you're Jehovah. You're Jehovah. You are the great I am. You're Jehovah. You are the great I am. You're Jehovah. You are the For some of you, that's not new territory. It feels, feels comfortable to get out in deep water. If it feels a little weird, that's okay. Sometimes it feels a little weird to us. It's okay. God stretches us. When you go into, the, into a deeper place of worship in the Lord, we're comfortable with psalms. We're comfortable with hymns and choruses. 
But the Lord calls for his people to what? To sing, to pray, to speak to one another with what? Spiritual songs, things that have never been heard before. And you may not feel like, oh, Carl, I can't sing. I'm not a musician. I don't want to. Then lift up a sound and just go, oh, God, oh, God. Yeah. And sometimes it's just one note and you grab a note. So everybody just grab that note, grab that note right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the, when the priest made a sound as one, when the priest came into the temple and made a sound as one, the glory of God came. The glory of God came. The glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God. What are you seeing, Ken? Okay, uh, so we are making history right here. Um, I just talked to Jason, and we're actually streaming live, and somebody from Northern Ireland is actually watching. Okay, so. I just want to say that some of the people that were actually in this revival 220 years ago were from Northern Ireland, and maybe Jason can say more, but I just want to say there's something going on, so you guys are a part of history right now. Shout it. There was a guy who was part of this revival. His name was John Carr. And I just learned about this a few months ago. The Lord put this on my heart two years ago. And I didn't know that John Carr was part of the revival until a few months ago. My grandmother's last name is Carr. C-A-R-R. And um, the Carr family hails from Ireland from Dublin. We have pubs and hotels and I have family members there that I've never met. So when he said that, it's literally going back to the roots. Back to where it all began. For the glory of the King. And the Lord said that we are going to Everybody's been talking about the awakening. I didn't even know that yesterday was Reformation Day. And it's not what the world says it is. It's Reformation Day. I didn't even know that. And the Lord told me a couple months ago, He said, I want reformation. I want reformation. That's what Reformation is. Back to the original design. He wants to take each and every one of you back to his original design the way that he created Adam because Jesus was the second Adam and Jesus paid the price so we could walk in the authority and the creation Adam named the animals guys Adam was in the garden with God and God wants to take you in the garden with him today and every day He wants you to abide in the garden. Back to your destiny, your purpose. You have a purpose. He has a plan. He wrote books about you in heaven. And those books are being opened today. Those books are open today. This moment, there is no accidents. This moment was preordestined for everybody in this room. So you could walk out. He doesn't want you to get up there. He doesn't want you to get there. He doesn't want you to get there and there to be pages that hadn't been turned. Words that hadn't been uttered. Ink that hasn't. He wants you to walk out everything he has for you. And so I just pray that today the Lord thrushes you in to your destiny. Because you all are called. You all are chosen. He chose you. You just have to choose him. 
Oh, that's a good word. On our first night, it was raining so hard. This young man who's had the vision for this, he had a whole household of people who just said, I'm going to go past the rain and come in. And then Pastor Mark Lancaster and I were able to pray over this man and say, this is only the beginning. But God's going to use you because you are a, a son of destiny. Hey, my friend James Gall just posted this. And after this October that we've all gone through, we're ready for November 1st. Anybody want to agree with that? Yeah. And this is what he said. And I really believe this is a word that will encourage you. It's a very short word. But if you want it, pull it in. Okay? Just pull it into your spirit. He said this, the scales are tipping yes. toward mercy. This week I was awakened by a vision of the scales of a judge before my eyes. A word came to me as I saw the weight of the balance shift. The tipping point has come. The scales are tipping toward mercy. Continue to pray this towards this end in Christ's great name. Lord, I agree with this word. And for some of you, if this is new, just jump in. Take the risk. Lord Jesus, I pray that the scales completely tip toward mercy over our city, over our families, over our land, and over this whole world. We believe this is your heart. Not to send judgment, but mercy. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Now pray into that all week of November. Good word, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. You know, you just can't make up this stuff. Who knew? That's our God. He's so big, isn't he? He's coming on the clouds. Sing it with me. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him whoa, whoa, whoa.
Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? None can stop. Let's declare it. None can stop the Lord. Sing it again. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Oh, yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? None can stop. None can stop the Lord. He's roaring with power and fighting the battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chain And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before one. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
your throne my eyes to your throne i will trust you i will trust you trust you alone trust in you alone i will give you all my worship i will give you all my praise you alone i love to worship you alone are worthy of my praise i will give you all my worship i will give you all my praise you alone I love to worship you alone are worthy of my praise you alone you alone are worthy of my praise you alone you alone are worthy your glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea not one corner untouched unchanged and Lord you have called us to be your glory carriers I just I look at 
how beautiful you are in my brothers and sisters. I know that there are several, there are many from other churches. And I bless you for being the reflection, for being Jesus in the earth. I bless you for what you carry. It's beautiful. I see it. There's a light on you. And it's the glory of God. And that's how he's going to release the glory of God in the earth. Through normal, ordinary people like me and you. So, Lord, we thank you for that calling. We thank you for that responsibility. And we honor you, Father. It is a privilege to be your dwelling place. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all the angels armed with power and might. Praise Him, sun and moon and shining stars. <laughs> Everything proclaiming who you are. For your name alone is excellent. No other name is high and exalted. Only you are praise you alone I worship and obey only you you alone only you yeah you alone praise the Lord all the birds of the air and creatures of the deep praise you all you mountains hills and growing things praise him fire and hail and stormy winds all proclaim your goodness without end for your name alone and obey only you yeah you alone only you you alone praise the lord all you rulers and children of the king praise him all you witnesses from the cloud you sing praise him young and old from near and far everyone proclaiming who you are for your name alone is excellent no other name is high and exalted and obey only you you alone only you only you you alone I praise you master creator I praise Works are glorious, so I praise you, supreme, supreme in everything, oh I praise you, master, 
master creator, I praise you. Your works are glorious, oh, I praise you, yeah. Supreme in everything, oh, I praise you, I praise you for your name alone. Oh 
You know, there's such power in words, isn't there? And we, when we declare that you and you alone, I will worship and obey you and you alone. That settles something in our spirits, doesn't it? It just feels different. It's like I've realigned with my destiny. I've realigned with the original design. I've realigned with who I am in Christ. Wow. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Nancy, do you have a word? Praise is a mountain, isn't it? <laughs> I was drawn to Isaiah 25, 6. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine. Here's what the fire Bible says about this. I just want to share this with you. The lavish banquet to be enjoyed in God's kingdom represents the wonderful blessings his followers will experience in his presence. A feast of well-aged wine it's translated literally a banquet of preserves. Thank you, Jesus. And on in Isaiah, here's the promise that even follows the feast. You, vessels, everyone here, are well-aged wine. Each one of you. It is time. It is time that we have the feast together. And then it goes on to say, and he will swallow up on this mountain, a mountain of praise, right? The covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God is a God of order, but if someone lost their Samsung phone by a Toyota Sienna, it's on the sound booth. Amen. Thank you, team. Wow. It's beautiful. And Lisa, I especially enjoyed having the B3. Thank you. Oh, thank you all for coming out this morning. It's an honor to have you here. It's an honor for us to be here. Wow. And um, I know Carl has a, a message this morning, and it's been stirring, and I've been hearing pieces of it at the house, so I'm so excited. He's going to charge us. He's going to charge our spirits with truth. And that's, <laughs> that's where the transformation comes as when we get a revelation of what the truth is who we are who he is in us amen yeah. amen carl thanks my love that is my love that's my wife by the way. so i can of course in the south darling well thank you darling y'all my darlings oh my darlings this one will be all right i don't think it'll break it so yeah thank you lord wow really i, I could just do that all day I, you know 24 7 when when's God, of course i know we have a house of prayer and 24 7 worship down in franklin isn't there anybody from the franklin house of prayer today god bless them there are friends down there i'm like we need it on the north gate too so <laughs> the Lord just said, well, what about the well of Nashville? You know, you just you know, stick your neck out. Oh, uh, come on. So who's the well of, who's the tribe of the well of Nashville here today? Wow, look at that. Cool. Bless y'all for being here. Now what, we got North, where, uh, North Heights, or New Heights over here, Brad? 
You're a gang. Woohoo! God bless you guys. The tribes come together. Any other tribes I don't know about? Just kind of. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, we'll take all of Kentucky. Take all of Kentucky for Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Uh, one stone, that's right. Yeah, yeah, got some one stone friends. I can say in this time, it's a unique season in the church in the earth where the prayers of Jesus in 17, John 17, and I'll read that today, actually, because that's part of the word from the Lord, as the unity of the church, and I won't give away pieces of the sermon, and I'm always, it's funny because I, you know, I've got like three pages today. Not bad, Lord. Thank you very much. I give, I was like, Lord, I don't, what am I going to say at the tent? Because I don't want to, Leanne and I, when we're preaching at the well of Nashville, one of our DNA models for the well is there is no model we don't follow a stream a church calendar a a routine and i love all the church so not a criticism if your churches do that because the other thing is the body is beautiful and when the church discerns the body of christ that jesus is the head and we're all the parts and we join in unity not conformity because we're going to be different we might even sit here and kind of shake our heads at each other like, I don't know, man, I don't think like that, you know. But as long as we're on the foundational stuff, okay, the house can have all kinds of different rooms, right? So I be- we believe in the foundations. We believe in good, solid doctrine. But beyond that, like when Paul said, don't get into petty arguments, right? Even Paul and the apostles were trying to always remind the church to unify. So it is a day of unity. I'll say that. It's the season of unity, And it doesn't mean compromising, but it just, the Lord says, just careful how you bless the church. Out of my people, I want to hear blessings and not cursing. And even if you know something's way off, don't be cursing it. Now, we can call out each other and we can hold up the banner of Jesus and discuss and do all that and disagree. But unity is a powerful thing. So, uh, but uh, anyway, that's not the sermon for the, the day. It's part of it. But I bless you with that. We're honored to be here. Thank you, Jason. It was very, uh, it was humbling that you said, would the Well of Nashville do the Sunday morning? And I know a lot of churches in the area do their Sunday. So a few of you are here. Some churches just call them in here. And, but we honor how God navigates the body. And uh, so I wanted the field. I was hoping like all the churches would just kind of come and fill the field today. But I'll tell you, the Lord's host is in the house. People have even been here at the tent this week and have seen visions of angelic hosts dancing and doing business, something stirring in the atmosphere. And I've really appreciated hearing the other pastors and people sharing and the worship teams. I I came and I just, I was sitting back there and wandering around and praying and helping Ori out with stuff. I'm like, Lord, only you. You're doing some awesome stuff. And we're just going to hang on for the ride and glorify God. And we're going to bless it. We're going to be the people that bless. So that, that's, uh, that's a little a pre-sermon sermon. And w- what I do, our folks at the well know Carl is not a normal sermon guy. I'm kind of an unpacker. Like the Lord gives me words, and then I start unpacking what I feel God downloaded. And a lot of times at the well, God just goes, forget this, because you're not talking about any of that. Any preachers in here, you ever get up and like, there's a left turn. Holy Spirit goes here. So we're very comfortable doing that, too. And um, so the word, though, that the Lord kept speaking as the tent was ramping up this week and we were doing this, and I'll hint at some things for those of you that haven't seen kind of the progress here, but this is a spark plug. Something is igniting here, and you may feel like, well, where, where are all the people? That doesn't matter. Right. It's what God is releasing in the portal from this ground that... Isaac Walton dedicated to the Lord over 200 years ago. Now we think, well, Carl, 200 years, where's been the, where's been the other revivals? You know, for God, that was like a... <sighs> the next wave comes and we're going, 200 years? Well, that was like a half a breath for God, right, or whatever. So what you do, this is the blessing of it. Like, Lord, I can't see it all, but I just bless it. And I release what is pouring out. And even sitting here and hearing the highway and generators and businesses and things going on. I'm thinking, Lord, you're releasing stuff into the atmosphere because of the faithfulness of people to grab hold of this. So today, the Lord just wants you to be super encouraged. The, the, word I, the download I was getting was the Lord says, I want to speak to the church, and I want to speak to the wanderer. Amen. 
the non-church, the unbeliever, if there are any unbelievers, and you don't have to raise your hand. There may be some of you that have been in church, but you're an unbeliever. You're an un, you're a unbelieving believer. I'll let you chew on that. Have you ever heard that term? Well, you're kind of in church, but you don't know what you think about Jesus. You don't know. I don't know if I'm really convinced yet. You know, is it okay to think that? Yes. Doubt is part of the journey. Grappling with your faith is part of the journey. So the Lord has a word for, for the church. For those of you that think, I'm in, man. I don't need to be convinced. I'm sold. I bought the farm, and I'm plowing all the fields and filling the barns, okay? So you're the fiery people. Three things the Lord wanted you to know. Number one, you are loved more than you know. And I just turned the page. What does that mean, Lord? You are loved more than you know. I don't call you slaves, right? And Scripture says, I don't call you slaves anymore. What does God call you? Friends. You're friends of God. And sometimes we get uncomfortable with that because we think, well, that we get too friendly with God. That's not healthy because then we're not in awe of God. I can tell you the more friendly I get with God, I'm more in awe of him. The more I know that I'm a son and a daughter, the more I'm like, oh. Oh, I cry during worship, and I got to get down on my knees. But he's my dad. Jesus called him what? Abba? That's daddy. Hey, daddy, who art in heaven. And that's not up there anymore. It's all amongst us, right? So the Lord wanted you to know that if you're wondering. In John 15, verse 14, and I'm going to read several of the verses there. John, if my well family knows John what 14 15 16 and 17 if i if i have to keep whittling down books out of the bible like new believers i'm like please don't start in genesis it's always like let's go with the gospel of john if i have one book i give them the gospel of john that's not a sellout that's like everything about jesus and then i say well, let's go from john and then go to the book of acts and book of romans and if you tear up the rest of the bible you're going to land on good stuff but I wouldn't tear up the rest of the Bible, but just to get grounded. Okay. So then 14, 15, 16, 17 is, is the four chapters that they call the final discourse, which is all of Jesus praying for us and praying for the apostles and speaking to the Father about the mission. And it's awesome. If you feel like you've got to charge your battery of your faith, and this is for the wanderer, or the maybe an unbelieving believer, go read John, the whole thing, 14, 15, 16, 17. Those four chapters, and ask Holy Spirit to hear the voice of Jesus praying it on you. But for now, the Lord wants you to hear John 15. So you are my friends if you do what I command. I don't call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father, church, I have made known to you. Now, if you take it seriously and you believe this, then you have to think, wait a minute, my confessions are wrong. I don't know what God's saying. I don't know the heart of the Father. Yes, you do. You know the heart of the Father. It's just down here in your temple. In Holy Spirit, sure, we got to break through the gateways of like our flesh. And what does it say? You spend your life renewing your mind, becoming what you are in Christ. You get that? Because I didn't, Carl didn't say this. Jesus is telling you today, and he wanted to remind the church, you guys that are on fire, that, have, that love Jesus. He calls you friends. He, the things that Jesus learned from the Father, and of course, they're one, I have made known to you. I wanted like, how big can I make the lettering? So you can know the heart of the Father. You can know, pray, ask, listen to the still, small voice. You're like, how about that? I know what the Lord meant by that. I know what the Lord's telling me today. I know how to pray. I know how to worship. Powerful. Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last forever. And so that whatever you ask in my name, Jesus, the what? Your daddy. Father's going to give it to you. That is powerful territory, church. So the Lord... Oh, okay, I'll read, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. You'll be happy because God goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, just do what I told you. Literally, I was typing like, Lord, just tell me what to say. So I was like typing, like, not eyes closed, but oh, yeah. 
Good Lord. <laughs> As if he needed coaching. Verse 17, so this is my command. Love each other. Whatever you ask in the Father's name, I'll give to you. But love each other. Wow. So a continuation. That's 17. Once you are in me, I never go away. I am the one that said, Jesus is saying this to me last night. He says, tell my people to remind them that I am in you. You are in me. Right. Leanne wrote a song called, I am in you. You are in me and we are one. See, the well folks know that. So this thing that Jesus has called the church to, you know, while we're processing life in this realm, we have all of this available. And you know what the devil, the devil has spent a lot of time screaming at the church and yelling, distraction, don't think, no, 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 don't. He doesn't want the sons and daughters to know who they are. No, 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 you're not special. No, Jesus, okay, so the next thing is I'm going to read you John 17. So the Lord said, give him a whole chapter. Now I need another music stand. I brought my Arnold Schwarzenegger Bible. This isn't a girly Bible. This is a manly Bible. No, it's okay, bro. I got it. Brad's getting scared. Man, you're pulling out a big Bible. Here we go. Here you. Who's got a bigger one? No, don't laugh. No, no. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Oh, that's cool, man. There you go. Brothers serving brothers, pastors serving pastors. So now I'm going to read from NLT. So I'm just going to read. I'm going to let Jesus speak to you. This is Jesus. Remember, and for those of you, if you don't read your word every day, get in the word every day. And if you've been dry and you're like, man, I can't handle it, man. Yes, you can. Quit confessing anything that keeps you from the Father because that's the enemy. Like, no, you, you'll never get it. You can't understand it. No, that's a lie. And I, the more I'm like, wait a minute, I don't hear God saying that. Jesus is saying I have his heart, and he reveals the Father to me. Wow, awesome. So I'll give you the end here. I'm not going to do 14, 15, 16, 17. I'll just do 17 because Jesus said so. After saying all these things, the previous three chapters which is awesome. I really love you, and I want you to go. I, if I could give you an assignment today, go home and read four chapters. I'm just excited about it. You can tell. But after Jesus prayed all this stuff, teaching about prayer, uh, teaching about Holy Spirit, teaching about the world's going to hate you, teaching about the vine and the branches, teaching us about the promises of the Holy Spirit, Jesus being the way to the Father. Jesus declares himself the gateway. There's not many spokes in a wheel leading to God in some cosmic reality. Jesus is only you. You alone. That's an offense to the world right now and most of the church. Oh, Carl, that's, man, that's old school. I know because look what school I'm in. This is very old school. But the problem is don't let the enemy tell you, oh, that's so, and the, and the new catchphrase, that's hate, man. That's a hate I'm like, no, it's not. I just love people more and ever, more than ever, and I want them to know how good this is. Yeah. So here's Jesus, chapter 17. <laughs> After saying all these things, Jesus looks up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you, for you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. Wow. And this is the way to have eternal life. Look out. Here's Jesus saying this. To know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Pause. So when people say, I know God, I love God, I go, awesome. What do you think about his son? Because you can't get to him. Well, I'm a good person. I'm like, I get it, man. You're beautiful. I know some brilliantly wonderful atheist. And I'm like, but... There's no perfection on this side, and this is true, and I believe it to be totally true. So you you got to step in through the gate. And Jesus said, this isn't the church. This isn't some old guys that wrote down a made-up book. It's Jesus speaking. Jesus Christ, you got to accept that. you got to know God, and you got to know Jesus. And Jesus Christ says it, the one that you sent to earth, Father. Verse 4, I brought you glory to you on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Jesus was in the Father, with the Father. He is God, the Trinity stuff. 
Don't forget that. Trinity is totally true. People say Trinity is not in the word. I'm like, come on, man. It just keeps saying it over and over and over. It just doesn't use the word. Be smart. Okay, verse 6. I have revealed you to the one you gave me from the world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, for I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it. I'm not just the disciples. I'm going to read on. And they know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. Salvation. My prayer is not for the world, but for those that you have given to me, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Are you catching? Are you? Many of you have read this again and again, but sometimes you don't preach it to yourself. Preach it to yourself. Stand in a mirror sometime and read the word out loud and listen to that. Verse 11, now I'm departing from the world. They are staying in the world, but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of your name or the name you gave me, and I guarded them so that no one was lost except the one headed for destruction. Verse 13, now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with joy. Yeah, Yeah, we're supposed to be filled with joy. I have given them your word and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world just as I don't belong to the world. So I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. The church needs to be right out in the middle of the thick of everything. Right? We're not hiding out in buildings, even though we're in the tent. This is just a place where we get, we pull in, charge our batteries, and then we go out and we're navigating life of the kingdom in the world so that people come to Jesus. So he's not going to take us out. They don't belong to the world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Pause. Thank you, Lord. little snap in the curtain. (laughs) Holy by your truth. We are holy in the Lord, and you're becoming more and more holy but you're becoming more like him, but you're already holy in the, this profound thing where we all go, wait a minute, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And even as you struggle with things here and your sin and your failings, and you can repent and confess, but what is God doing with that? You're already a son and a daughter. You're just becoming more like him because it's not who you are to, to crash in the ditch, right? But we, what does the enemy do? Here's what the devil does. I'm just going to keep wrangling. Here we go. We're just going to keep you busy all about the business of just trying. If, when you get holy enough and righteous enough, then I'm going to do revival. And I believe in repentance. I believe in coming to the Lord. I believe in the church doing rightly. But when is it going to get right enough for God to show up? And when are you going to feel like you're good enough or right enough to speak the gospel? You know, I can't do this, man. I got to get right with God first. And that's the church. This is still for the church. I gotta, I'll gotta. i never be able to do this, man. I can't do what you guys do. Yeah, you can, because I can't do this. There's not a pastor around that would ever be, if you're being honest, say that you've got it all figured out and you're living the perfect life. If you, if you do, please come up and see me later, and I will slap you for lying. So, No, I won't. I'll give you a hug and we can talk about it. So. No, it's just deception if we think we're good enough. So, but it's a lie of the enemy that keeps the church at bay. That's what the Lord, the, the big thing the Lord was getting f- for me, for you, was to encourage you to like, just go, do, do yeah. this thing. Amen. All right? I'm sending them into the world and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made Be made holy by your truth. Jesus is that truth. I'm praying not only for these disciples, just to clarify, because I've had people say, well, Carl, you know, that dispensation, he's talking to the apostles. No, he's not. 
verse 20. I'm praying not only for these guys, you guys, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Who is that? If you're in, you're in. You got it. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one, Lord, as you are in me. Get all this. Father, I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. That is like, oh my gosh, that's prime rib down at Ruth's Chris, right there. That's, that's prime rib in the scripture, right? That This intertwined thing that we are with the Lord. Verse 22, I have given them the glory you gave me. Oh no, not that, pause. What did Jesus say you have? Not just Jesus and the Father, but since they're dwelling here, what did he give you? What was that word? He gave you glory. Not for you, but to just spill it out into the earth. And you're like, man, I'm feeling powerful. What this should do is make you feel like a devil chaser. Right? Now, we're not going to go chasing devils. The Lord will give you assignments. And the more you just step into who you are as a son and daughter, you'll be grabbing hold of your assignments without shame, without resisting the Lord, without the fear that you, I just can't do it. You can't. It's Jesus in you. It's the glory of the Lord in you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. It is. Wow. I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, you are in me, and we are one. May they experience, experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given to me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Amen. Oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know that you sent me and I have revealed, to, revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Oh, my goodness. I really could just stop there, but the Lord says there's more. Now, the Lord wanted you to hear his words, chapter 17. Carl didn't make any of that up. Is that not? That's like super good news. Okay, so you just feel like you got an upgrade. Now we got no girly man Christians. We got big, strong Christians in the room. Great. Okay, number two. So Jesus wants, to know, wants you to know you're loved more than you can imagine. Number two, the enemy loves to tell you all your failures and your sin, and then he tries to use it to separate you from me. Pause. This is still what the Lord wanted to say to the church. As if I come and go according to your righteousness. So you wait to draw near, or you stay away until you're all fixed up, you tell yourself, he, the enemy, wants you to stay distant from me because that works really well. It makes you more sinful. It messes you up even more. It, it keeps you from getting things dealt with. And then you're trying to get counseling and all these other things. And counseling is good, nothing against it. But if you're spending your life never with a breakthrough that the enemy has done a good job and he's just got chains on you and you think, I just got to live in these chains. And you're not stepping into fully what you are. You're just letting the enemy lie and you're like, and this isn't beating you up, but this is what he does to most of the church. Leanne and I have seen it in our whole church life. And we feel it too, so nobody is immune to the battle. Okay, But the Lord was saying this. He wants you to stay distant. But none of that's true. This is not true. Trust me, says the Lord. When your heart is already fully mine, then I become fully yours. It's time to step into your kingdom position, your life in me, your authority in me. I have given you authority. Chapter Luke 10, 19. What? NIV says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. NLT, New Living Translation, says, look, I have given you authority, all of the power of the enemy, and you can walk on snakes and scorpions. Nothing will harm you. People say, well, Carl, those are kind of new translations. Here's King James. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And most of, and I get it, it's hard, but we have to step into it, right? And it's available. Jesus, help me. Like, 
we've been proclaiming like even since corona, the COVID thing, the coronavirus, I'm like, no, it's, it's going to die. It's going to die. People say, you, can't, you guys can't pray like that. Well, since when did we hit some disaster that Jesus goes, man, I didn't plan on that one. You guys are right. With all due respect, I was going up to Springfield and there was a big billboard with Jesus with a mask on. I was like, oh, God, I'm sorry. I pulled off the road and took a picture, and I, I was sorry for the church. And I love all the church. And if you're from that church, I'm really sorry. Jesus is not wearing a mask. But it doesn't mean that we can, and I'm not against taking all precautions and using wisdom, so I'm not a mask hater. That's not the point. Okay, so don't misunderstand. I believe in moving in wisdom. Wash your hands, take care of your families, all the blah, blah, blah. You can do the list. So that would be loving. But on the other hand, what is the church confessing? What are you believing for? No, I'm believing all the time. This thing's going to die. Somebody calls, oh, I got tested positive. Really? I go, okay, in Jesus' name, I curse that COVID in you right now. And we do it for any, you know, we just, we're finishing up the, if you know John G. Lake Ministries, we're finishing Curry Blake's 19-week series in healing, just charging our church with, and this happened before COVID hit. And so it's amazing. So anyway, it's, this isn't a COVID sermon. Just the idea, it's just like you have full authority. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says, don't get sidetracked, son. Pastor Brad, thank you so much. Even when Pastor Brad was preaching the other night, he says, all these things that we struggle with and our flesh and, th- and sin and whatever, and we could just get so, no, but wait a minute. He says, but wait a minute. He says, in Christ, I am righteous. He's got it, right? You want to be powerful just like I am the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He made Christ who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we would become what? The righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to God and placed in a right relationship with him by his gracious loving kindness. Not by you getting better. And I want you to be better. We don't let people, I don't want people sinning and being foolish. And if people are going like, well, I got the grace of God so I can just go do what I want. I go, you don't understand the grace of God. So it's not, it's not an excuse for greasy grace or universalism. I'm not a universalist at all, it, but it's in Christ. What the phrase means, anyone who believes in Christ has been reconciled and put in right standing with God, not based on your own works, but on the basis of what Christ has done, which is the only form of righteousness acceptable to the Lord, the Father. So if you start going, well, I'm going to take, I'm going to get back into doing this and I'm, I'm going to start keeping tabs and I'm going to feel pretty good. I'm doing pretty good today. If you're, be- if you're messing with that, you're wasting time. The Holy Spirit will convict you to repent and let go of something and confess it or whatever, however you need to process it. But you're already in Christ. You have to always remember, like, wait a minute, that's not who I am. I'm in Christ. I don't do this and this and this anymore. And how about that? The more I know who I am in Christ... I don't want to do those things because right away I know I don't have to do that. Because we have people in our church that you don't understand, man. I just, it's bad. I just have this problem. You know, I'm just, I am this. I go, stop saying that. I've told that to people. I am this. No, you're not. I say, repeat after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Do you believe in Jesus? They go, yeah, I love the Lord with all my heart. Filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. So you are not the thing you were just speaking. And the power of your tongue is giving the enemy permission to kind of latch on some stuff to you. So go like, wait a minute. And I still, I'm, you know, I'm 60-ish years old. You'd think I'd be perfected by now. Anybody older than me, 60? Are you perfected yet? No. You kind of go like, gosh, I thought I was over that. But the more I confess that, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I don't do that anymore. But if I screw up tomorrow, I'm like, oh, Lord, I hate that. I hate sin. I hate anything that's not more of Jesus. And I'm more and more empowered. So I'll move on. Woo, thank you, Lord. The thought here is more profound than we can usually comprehend. It doesn't simply state we are righteous in Christ as, be- as the believer that we are, but it says we are the righteousness of God in Christ. If you look at the complete Jewish Bible, for those of you that love like Jewish studies, it's put this way, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 
God made this sinless man, Jesus, to be a sin offering on our behalf so that in union with Christ, we might fully share in God's righteousness. I can't preach it better than Jesus. So as a believer, when I say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, it doesn't mean just trusting in Jesus Christ that it puts me in right standing with God, but it also means in spite of what I see in myself or what others might see or my weaknesses, I share the righteous nature of God as a gift. God's righteousness is a gift to all who believe in Christ, right? And who follow a life of obedience to the Lord. I'm not going to unpack all that. Romans 5, 17, New American Standard Bible. For if by the transgressions of the one death reign through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, we will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Powerful. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let me move on. The Lord says, edit a little bit, and those of you at the well know that I'll do this. So the Lord will, because I get, I know I'm preaching a little bit between the lines. Let's move on here to the third thing. So three things the Lord said. Church, you were loved. Number two, watch out for the enemy's schemes and lies. He's a good tricker. And he'll do everything he can to distract you from who you are. And it'll keep us from our mission right now. Revival's coming. The church doesn't have time to waste to keep feeling like we can't confront the world. That's what this is about. Number three, unity is possible. The Lord was saying, because I hear that, no, you don't just, you don't understand, Carl. I don't know. We're all so different. That's beautiful. I love it. The Lord said, unity is possible. Conformity is not. I don't want my body conforming. I made the body that way. You get this? Now, this isn't Carl. I really feel like the Lord was speaking to me when I was typing. Lord, what do I tell your people? I made the body that way. But again, the enemy will try to leverage this for his purpose. But it's time to cut him off from that scheme and to bind and loose as you see it. When people say, well, look what's happened to the church. Thousands of denominations and factions. And now we got home churches and churches that want to meet out in the park and we're doing a tent. Or they go to the bar or a restaurant and create. I'm like, good. The body of Christ is very diverse. And the Lord says to bless the church. I'll fix the pieces. You do your work. Don't worry about the guy down the street. If you see them like, those that are for us are not against us. Lord, they're not part of our group. You remember all those stories? Lord, and Jesus is like, they're not, they're not against us. Well, they're healing some people. They're baptizing. Good. They're coming into the kingdom. So this is the Lord. Bishop Joy was here on Saturday, or uh, uh, was it Friday morning? Now I can't remember what day was Friday. No, he, he did the morning, Saturday morning. He was so good speaking this about churches being so different. He, he talked about some things their church believes and how he believes. He says, I don't care if you don't believe that. We're just all in Christ. And I thought, you got it, Bishop Joy. And I love his name, too. Bishop Joy. I love that. We can work together even in our difference. Keep the unity of the faith. Wasn't that a big theme throughout all the New Covenant? Ephesians 4, here's Paul. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Church, oh my goodness. Can I say this again? Right now, I'm not seeing a lot of humble and gentle on social media. From the church. And I'm like, I keep backing away. About the time I want to type something, and the Lord says, do you really want to say that? No, Lord. Delete. Delete. Pray, 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 pray right now. Bless encourage bring encouragement speak light into the darkness oh it's amazing what that does i'm not looking just to be a, it's not being a people pleaser it's being walking in this place humble gentle be patient bearing with one another in love verse three make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace there is one body one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father over all. Who is over all and through all and in all. There that thing is again. Paul got it, right? They are in agreement. So, unity is possible as far as people will let it happen. You be the instigator. Love people. What can we do together? How can we reach the community? How can we change something? What do you got that I don't have? 
We're doing a tent meeting. Can you, let's call some friends and wait a minute, we need some more equipment. You know, oh, I need this. It'd be good to have that. Can we get a barbecue on Saturday? And now people are getting saved. Somebody walks in, man, what's going on here? Unity is a force. Okay, so that's the three things for the church. I'm going to move quickly for the unbeliever. The wanderer, the still wandering, not yet part of the body, maybe. Or maybe you're in the body and you're not sure what you think. Or maybe you were raised in church, but you're not sure if you even believe it. Now you're thinking, Carl, why would you say that? Because you're in a tent of believers. Well, I don't know you all. I'll just say I was raised in church and I believed, but I wasn't born again until I was like in college. And I thought I believed. I thought he was Lord. He wasn't yet. And then I know a lot of people that have been on fire, born again, blah, blah. And you see it on social media. Like, well, look at all these Christian artists and Christian worship leaders and pastors that say, you know what? I'm an atheist now. I don't believe any of that. I'm like, look, I don't even get how that happens. And it breaks my heart. I don't judge them. I'm like, oh, please talk to somebody else because somebody has not helped you. But the Lord said this. The first thing he says, to the wanderer and the un... <laughs> you are loved more than you know. You notice the same thing that he said to the church? You are loved more than you know. I was shocked. I cried when I wrote it last night. Lord, what do I say to the unbeliever? First thing, you are loved more than you know. John 3, 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Sorry, universalism doesn't cut it if you've squandered that or wandered into that. So there is a decisive point. Don't keep running from the Lord. When you're in, in the heap and the trash heap and things are messed up and life is totally a wreck, or you think like your faith is crashed, or you're like, I don't know what I believe, come back. The Lord says, come back, I love you, it's going to be okay, let me help you navigate it. Verse 19, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has not been done in the sight of God. Then the Lord said the second thing, tell the wanderer and the unbeliever, don't wait one more day. Don't wait until you think you're ready. Don't wait till you think you've got it all fixed. Don't wait till you think you really understand it all. Because trust me, been in the Lord a long time, you're never going to understand it all. Okay, very important. So the Lord says, but the time is now. Revival, awakening in your spirit is now. But God is not going to put you on a string like a puppet, like, oh, I came to the Lord because I couldn't help myself. Well, the more you're, you're convicted unto righteousness because of the love of God, but you still get to choose. Faith is, it's a powerful thing because you have free will. Those of us that have spouses, or if you've ever been in love, what would it be like to be in love if you forced somebody, whoo-hoo, you love me, come and love me, little puppet on a string. God, could, People say, why didn't God do that? Because he loves us. The first thing, I loved you more than you know, but it's I got to have it freely. But don't wait. That sounds like an old school kind of preacher thing. Don't wait. Think, well, let me think about it this week. And now I'm like, like, no, come on, let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. I love the guys that were barbecuing. I don't know if the young man is here today that got saved just a few days or yesterday. I don't know if he came in. That's the way, like call people in right now. Don't worry about all the details. Don't worry about the details. The enemy lies and tells you that I, Jesus said, am not real. This is, he's always arguing about the Lord or that you're not good enough yet, that there's too much sin and darkness in my life. If you only knew my junk, Carl, there's no way. I'm unforgivable. Boy, that's the perfect lie of the enemy. Or I'm uncleanable. Or maybe I just don't care. I don't believe in this God. I don't believe in Jesus. Maybe, maybe I like my sin. Maybe I like my rebellion. 
If I give my life to the Lord and I repent and I come to the Lord and get free, I don't know, all my fun will go away. Lie. That's a lie. I can tell you, when people down the road, when I talk to people down the road and I said, do you wish somebody would have confronted you as a young person? They go, I wish, but nobody came after me. Nobody came after them. The church locked up in a building and we didn't share. If you're figuring out how to do it, do it imperfectly. Hey, do you know the Lord? Do you know Jesus? That simple. It's that simple. And then let the conversation begin. But that's not true either. So maybe I like my sin. Yeah, that's, I can't imagine that. But that's what the people sometimes they do. But we can challenge them. Because in the dark of the night, here's what happens. We all think that there's this kind of lie, and they seem so sure. But in the dark of the night, while they lie in their beds, your spirit is still crying out for that something else, something more. And then the enemy goes, well, maybe it's more drugs or more this or more that or more adrenaline or more business or more money. Maybe your own self-righteousness. You're a good guy. You're a really good guy. People love you. Just keep prospering and do well and don't pay attention to God there because do you really need the Lord? You don't need the Lord. Look how good you're doing. But in your beds, when you lie in the dark, your, your soul just goes, something's not right. Nothing else cuts it. Nothing else gets it done. But God says, while we were yet sinners, while we're a mess, right? Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Hang on, I'm getting there. It produces character, that produces hope and hope. But hope does not put us to shame because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, just at this right time, and now that's why God's saying now is the right time for revival. He died 2,000 years ago, but right now there's a new wave coming. Very, very rarely does anybody die for good people, but though for, you know, a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But verse 8, but God demonstrated his full love for all of us in this while we were what? Still broken and sinners and a mess. Christ died for us. So you don't wait to get fixed up. So we're now justified by this blood. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? And number three, I'm getting the sniffles. I leak. Pardon me. I get to read in the word and then I cry. Tough German guy that I am. Number three, the Lord says, don't allow the humanity, the flaws, your weakness of my people Whoa, wait a minute, Lord. Wait a minute. He's saying this to you, unbeliever, doubter, wanderer. No, listen what the Lord, this Lord said. Don't allow the humanity and the flaws and the weaknesses of my people to keep you from me. It does not keep me from them. And it won't keep me away from you. Now, this, is the, this was strong. I felt, Lord, that sounds really, it's right, but that's heavy. Because a lot of times when I see people like, I don't know, I want to be in the church, man. So many hypocrites in there. I've been hurt by pastors and churches. And that Christian, they're, they're worse than the world. I mean, anybody ever hear that story? Now, half the time, I think it's a lie of the enemy. Kind of like, I'm going to propagate. I'm going to keep telling the lie until the world goes, yeah, the church is really bad. No, it's not. Not all of it. But the enemy uses that lie. And the Lord said to the wanderer, if you're wandering, are you one, you're not sure what you believe. Don't let the weakness of the church, those that really love me, keep you from deciding to follow me. I'm not asking you to follow those people. I'm asking you to follow me. Okay? <laughs> the other part of that was it doesn't keep the Lord away from his church. Don't ever believe that lie. And it doesn't keep the Lord away from coming after you if you're the doubter or the unbeliever. Thank you, Lord. You're all lost without me, said the Lord. The enemy also uses this reality to, to divide and conquer the church and to keep the lost from coming to me. 
Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look at that face, not at the people. Now, the church should represent Jesus well, but we're not ever going to do it perfectly. Hebrews 12. Hang on, I'm about done. Such a large crowd of witnesses is all around us. So we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially sin that just won't let go. And we got to get rid of it. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. We must keep our eyes on Jesus who leads us and makes our faith complete. He endured all the shame of the cross because he knew that later on he would be glad he did it. Now he is seated at the right side of God's throne, the right hand of the Father. That's all the Father's authority, right? So keep your mind on Jesus who put, <laughs> wow, who put up with many insults from the world, from sinners and so on. Then you won't get discouraged and give up. Do you get that from Hebrews? That's very profound. The only time I see church getting, when people get discouraged, believers get discouraged, their, their eyes are like down here. They're trying to judge each other and like or that, that very situation that the enemy uses. Like, no, no, don't look at Jesus because that's so good. You won't be worried about that abuse. No, Jesus is so awesome. You won't be worried about that hypocritical thing because you'll have a heart for compassion and pray about it. Oh, don't, don't look at Jesus. You get the idea? That's the perfect enemy plot. I'm just keep you thinking about all this down here rather than focus. Now, look, Jesus, I'm just using that. If you're in Christ, he's in you. But... Focusing on the Lord is what the Lord is reminding us to do. So keep your mind on Jesus, who put up with everything. Then you won't get discouraged and give up. None of you have yet been hurt in your battle against sin, at least in that time. But you have forgotten that the scripture says to God's children, when the Lord punishes you or disciplines you, don't make light of it. And when he corrects you, don't be discouraged. The Lord corrects people that he loves, and he disciplines those that he's called. So yeah, you're, if, as a believer, you're going to go through boot camp and training, but you're still a son and daughter, okay? Be patient. And this is how God treats his children. So there you go. The Lord said stop. You get the idea. The Lord's speaking to the sons and daughters, and he's calling in the wanderer. And I bless, we bless, and we unify with the church in Goodlettsville and in Nashville region. And what's God's, God's doing amazing things in the earth. I'm very hopeful, you know. But the world's never been so messed up and weird. But, you know, great revivals exploded on the scene every time when the world and society was a mess. That's what I've read a little bit about revivals. It came in the middle of utter grossness and chaos and society was a mess so we're on we're on the verge of it and i think it's here and that's what we're praying for and believing for and it starts with us church rise up stand in your strength you don't have to stand up but what i mean in, in your faith steady on put your anchor down say lord i'm here i love you thank you for taking care of me you, you have permission to continue to transform me, renew my mind so I understand who I am as the righteousness of God in Christ. And I am going to ask, I will purposely say one, let's bow our heads in prayer. And if you're, you're feeling like, you know what, Carl, I've been in church my whole life, and you're right. I've been kind of keeping God on the outside. I don't even think I really believe that yet. And if the Lord got you this morning, not Carl, but if the Holy Spirit said, hey, come, come to me, Turn your eyes to Jesus. You can raise your hand and say, pray for me right now. And pray for me. Even if you think you've been in church or maybe you're just visiting the park today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you can just pray this in your heart. I'm not going to have you come up. If you want prayer later, you can come and see the guys up here after the meeting. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God. And I repent of all my sin and brokenness and my selfishness and everything that has kept me from you. And Lord, I declare in my speaking to my own soul that I now believe in who you are. I not only believe, Lord, but I ask you to come into my being, my very spirit and inhabit me as a living stone, as it says in your word. 
inhabit my life and I give you my life as a brother, as a sister, to be your servant, even though I'm not a slave, I, I joyfully receive you as Lord so you can direct my steps. This is very important, church and wanderer. If you're, if you're just doing this in your heart for the first time, it's, it's more than just acknowledging Jesus as a being or even saying, yeah, Jesus is Lord or Jesus is God. I see that. The, the huge step of like the Lord's wanting to indwell and help you and love you and become Lord and truly take over the things of your life, that's where salvation happens. Even the demons know that he is God and they tremble with fear. So just acknowledging him of who he is is not, is not the full story. It's relinquishing yourself to the fullness of who you can be in him. So, so you can say, Jesus, I let you have all of me. I in you and you in me. And I dedicate my life to be one with you. And receive that all that you have for me. Everything you've written in my book, I receive it for the glory of the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. I will say this as a final thing. The Holy Spirit is calling church giants of the faith. We use that term a lot in our people. Like Leanne and I have been declaring over our church, you're the giants of the faith. Yeah. It's not somebody you're reading. They're not going to write enough books because it doesn't need to be in a book anymore. It's good to talk about the works of the Lord, but I'm declaring to you, giants of the faith in this day, the Lord's going to give you miraculous assignments. He's going to give you outreach things like you've never had. Don't be afraid. I'll say that because right now I said that and some of you are like, oh, man, my life is, I don't know if I, just, just say, Lord, whatever you want to do. He's calling the giants into service. There's no army reserves in the kingdom of God. He's calling up the church in these days. And it's going to be because it's an army of love. It's going to be an army of representing the gospel. It's going to represent Jesus in this season of, of horrible brokenness in the world and in society. And it's going to transcend what happens in elections and societies and, and plagues and all that. It's going to transcend because you're going to step into a place of faith. And the Lord's saying, look for my assignments. Embrace what I'm un unraveling in your scroll today. And let me do some different things that you've never done before. Because I have some really good things in store. And that I want my church, says the Lord, to be full of might and power and to receive my glory so you can give glory to the Father. That was my mission, and that's now my mission imparted into you for a new chapter today. I bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance, his, in other words, his glory towards you. May he give you his comfort, and may he give you his shalom peace. Amen and amen, Jason. Thank you so much, Carl and Leanne and the well for being here. It's just an honor and, you know, we bless you and uh, we decree a double portion over you all. So we're going to go off script here because God doesn't have an agenda. It's heaven's agenda. But first, I'm just going to just do We're going to do a little housekeeping. Um, we're going to cook and we're going to feed people starting from one to six. So if any men want to go and go help fire up some grills here in, you know, the next 10, 15 minutes, see Bree. Uh, Bree, I don't know. Come wave. She's got the baby back there. Go see Bree. So, uh, and uh, it's not her baby, but she's holding a baby, and so uh, just go see her and get plugged in, and we're gonna we're gonna feed people. They said there's no such thing as a free lunch, but in the kingdom of God, there is a free lunch. We don't live by the world; we live by God's standards. Um, mm.
going to do a few things here. Sort of what Carl was talking about, his message was uh, so I've been on this land and I've been praying on this land for two years this has been my secret place in this very spot where this tent is I would sit and I would just be alone with God because he calls us to intimacy he calls us to relationship But the Lord showed me a lot of things on this property, and I'm supposed to share one of them with you right now. And he told me to take my shoes off before I walked up here. So there's a man named Moses, and he, he said, you're standing on holy ground. Take your shoes off. So one day I was, I was back here in the woods, and the Lord said, take your shoes off. And he said, I want you to walk into the woods. And I said, Lord, that's going to hurt. There's branches and thorns, and I don't want to do that. I told him no. He said, take your shoes off. Because he's a loving God, but he's also a stern God. And when he tells you to do something, you better listen. He's looking for obedience. It says in the word that obedience is better than sacrifice. And it also says that fire falls on sacrifice. But when we're obedient and we listen, the fire falls on us. So I walked into the woods and I found a few things and I'm not gonna share everything I found and everything he said. But I'm over here in this corner and I found three golf balls. One of them said, Lifeway Christian Stores. The other one said, Bridgestone. And the next one said, Callaway. And I didn't know what that meant. And I looked it up and Callaway meant pebbles. And the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is time, church, to build a bridge. It's time to build a bridge between the churches. And he said, cast your stone. Cast your stone. And it says in the word that when we are standing on that stone, that we are on a firm foundation. We need to stand, church, together in unity on a firm foundation. And Jesus is the cornerstone. And then Callaway, pebbles. He's looking for the ripples. He's looking for the ripple effect. And that's what he wants. He doesn't want us to leave here changed. He wants us to cause a ripple that's going to go out of Goodlettsville. That's going to go into Nashville. That's going to cover the state of Tennessee. That's going to cover this nation. That's going to cover this world. Because in John 17 it says, so the world will know that Jesus is king. Hmm. And just like I, we found that lady's cell phone earlier, there was no accident in that. There's no accidents. There's no coincidences. Do you have eyes to see? Do you have ears to hear? God speaks to us. He, he shows us signs in the natural as well as in the spiritual. And I'm sitting over there and he goes, he goes, just like that cell phone was lost, it was found. And if, if you're lost today, if anyone is lost today or you know anybody out there in the world that is lost today, they will be found. Because what is lost is found. And that's what God is crying out for all of his children. He's crying out for all of his lost. He's crying out for his lost world to be found. 
We need to come on bended knee and pray for his lost world to be found. Father God, we just pray, God, that the wicked will turn asunder, God. We pray, God, for your lost to be found, God. Lord, use us. It's as easy as going to the grocery store and smiling at somebody. It's as easy as saying, how is your day? It's so simple. It's so simple. And we do it with joy. He said, come to me like little children. And if you do not come to me like little children, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So we need to come to him with joy, with hope, with thanksgiving and praise. And spread that. Spread that across the region. Hmm. We're going to do a couple more things. I want to call up uh, my rabbi friend. <laughs> I did a Seder with this man. Uh, several years ago, and I, I didn't know he was going to be here today, and uh, so he, he wants to say a prayer, and I think it's very timely, and then we're going to do a few more things outside of the box, because we're not in the church box. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are gathering, we I probably, I don't know if anybody in here knows this or not, the convergence of events is just staggering what's going on. Reformation Day yesterday, Election Day on Tuesday, and today we are gathering with untold numbers of God's people around the world to pray for the persecuted church. This is the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Jerry, you mentioned the word from James Gall about mercy. Carl mentioned, and, and this is something I know because we've been, we've been worshiping with you online for several months, and we, we are always talking about the beauty of the body of Christ. Br brothers and sisters, we have untold numbers of our brothers and sisters who are maybe not in spiritual chains, but they may be in physical chains, and they're from every denomination around the world. There are many different countries. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, today we come to you as a body here in Goodlettsville, Tennessee, and we pray and declare, Father God, for our brothers and sisters in China, Lord, North Korea, Iran, and all points in between. Lord God, we declare we receive their prayers for us, Lord, today. And we, and we know they receive our prayers for them, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. And just so you guys know, if you have to go, go. Don't feel held down because I'm here speaking come and go as you please it's the kingdom of God you're not in chains to your seat <laughs> so the next thing that I need to do before I do this next thing is I need to repent I've never done anything like this before I'm not a pastor, I'm just a man. And I'm sorry, Carl. I got a little snippy at Carl this morning. I apologize, Carl. I was tired, but 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 I I didn't have the best life or childhood. It was hard. It was a hard road. I didn't have very many friends. I was bullied. I was beat up. Uh, so I didn't have very much confidence. And uh, the last couple of days, we've had different churches here. And I remember I keep coming, hey, hey asking these pastors, is that okay? What I just said, what, what I just did, you know, is that okay? You know, I just, is that okay? what I shared, I mean, it was the Holy Spirit, but, but 
but I just wanted them to accept me. And sometimes, sometimes we don't feel accepted. And in the church, we have a lot of orphans raising orphans. And uh, the Lord did not call you to be an orphan. He did not call you to be an orphan. He called you to be a child of God. He called you to be a son and a daughter of God. And he did not call you to conform to what man says. He did not call you to conform what the world says. He says, and Jesus said, I am not of the world. You are not of the world. But you are of me. You are of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So I'm just going to repent before we do this next thing because everything starts with repentance. Father God, I repent of letting any fear of man come upon me. Lord, I repent, God, of letting any conformity of man come upon me, God. Lord, I repent, God, of letting any conformity of the world come upon me, God. Because I am not of the world. I am of your kingdom. I do not need to do what man says. I need to do what my father says. Because you, Lord Jesus, said, I only do what my father says do. I only say what my father says say. So, Lord, I repent, God. And, Lord, I ask that I only do as the father says do. And I know he tells me to do some weird stuff sometimes. But that's okay. He told John the Baptist to do some weird stuff, too. And Father God, I repent. And I only want to say what you say. Because your Holy Spirit is joy and grace and mercy and love. And the last thing I want to do. The Lord woke me up at 4 a.m. I was sleeping on this stage. It was chilly last night. The Lord woke me up at 4 a.m. and he was speaking to me. And uh, he said, son, I want you to do this. And I said, God, but I don't want it to be about me. I don't want it to be about me. He said, it's not about me. It's about my power working through you. And church, he wants his power to work through each of you. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, he wants the body of Christ to be activated. And know that what, what, what we're about to do, there is no pressure. Don't do it because others are doing it. Don't do it because it's a me too thing. He only wants you to do it if he's telling you to do it. And he only wants you to do it if you're fully in it. If you're, if you're on the fence, don't do it. You don't have to. No one's going to judge you. Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world, but I came to save the world. No one's going to judge you. You do it if the Holy Spirit tells you to do it. And only if the Holy Spirit tells you to do it. Because that's the only way that you can receive. And the Lord wants you to receive fully what he's about to do. He said that he would come in dudamus power. Dudamus. That word means explosive. Explosion. Dynamite. <laughs> his dynamite power. And his power, his banner over you is love. So I just want to say, and Jordan, if you can get ready, and any other men, <sighs> mm. this is different for me, and I know it's going to be different for some people here. And say, if the Holy Spirit wants to pour out His power, so if you want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, I say, line up right here, line up right here. 
And I need some men. God said, he said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. My sons and daughters shall prophesy. My old men will dream dreams and my young men will see visions. It's time, church. It's time that we take his power outside. Outside of our four walls. It's time, church, that we take his power to the streets. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. For the lost will be found. There is no more death in the land. There is no more destruction in the land. There is only power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's time, church. It's time to wake up. Arise and shine for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord is around you. For he's made you to set the captives free. To bring liberty to the poor. To be there for the brokenhearted. The sons to the fathers, the fathers to the sons. To raise the orphans. To take care of the widows and the poor. So, I'm going to come and lay hands on each of you. And the Lord is going to anoint you with his power.
is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Our salvation. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Our salvation. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength, our salvation. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and our salvation. talk with him just a little more. Let him breathe through our breath. Let him see through our eyes. Jesus. What have I read about you just a little more in the book? 